Ian is one of the most energetic, vivacious little guys you'll ever meet. He has such a you know thirst for life. Really, always just wants to try his hardest and do his best. cheerleader. She cheers for the area that we live in and she also loves shopping. She's very much into fashion um, but her biggest love is um, Lily loves to sing. Well I've always loved singing since I was could talk. You know mom when did I start singing? She would sing when she was two in the bathtub or in you know wherever she was I could always hear her singing. And my dream is to be a country music recording artist. She can do it. I already know she can do it. I've heard her sing, she's 10 years old, but <laughs> she can do it. And we will do whatever we need to do to get her on that path. Who says, who says, who says you're not perfect? Who says you're not worth it? Who says you're the only one that's hurting? Trust me, that's the price of beauty. Who says you're not pretty? Who says you're not beautiful? Who says? I just met Ian yesterday, and he is one of the sweetest little boys I've ever met. He, oh. And we went to Ed Rollins' house. We had a photo shoot, it was, uh, and it was so much fun. He was like banging on those drums. I was like, you good, go, go, have fun. And then I was over there playing the piano, and it was just, oh. He is really special. Like, he just has so much love to give, and he always just wants to make sure everyone's happy. He just is always just, hey, are you happy? If not, do you want something I have? I mean, just anything that he can do to help another child or another person, he's the first one to raise his hand to do. And uh, it makes Ian so special. I love him. We knew that Ian was a little developmentally delayed, and just as a precaution, they, uh, um, they scheduled uh, just a routine MRI of the brain. And we went in that morning. They said we'd be in and out in about 30 minutes. We went in, and like 20 minutes into the, the MRI, um, the, the doctors rushed in, and, um, and they're like, you know, we, we think we may have found something. And then they went out, and two hours later, um, they sent us home telling us that they definitely think they found some kind of lesion in his brain stem, but they were afraid, they were afraid that they wouldn't be able to touch it or operate or anything on it. Your life changes in a heartbeat. You think you're gonna be back at work in an hour and everything's gonna be all hunky-dory and, and, and nothing's gonna change. Let me tell you something, your life changes. Everything that we ever knew or did, our goals in life, our, our everything changed. Um, you know, now you're just fighting to, to try to keep your child alive. So it was a, a, a not the day you would have anticipated when you woke up, for sure. It just changed our family dynamic for the forever. I miss how my family was before November 1st of that year when Ian was diagnosed. The statistics are, are just, it's devastating that every single day, 46 children are told, you have cancer. You never want this to happen to your child, or even to, or to anyone you know. It is one of the most horrific diseases, and when it happens to a child who has done nothing to anybody, the most important gift you can give a family is a cure for their child. And so that's why at Ian's Friends Foundation, we focused on research. The way I think about this is that physicians have a sort of bag of recipes that they can pull from when they have a child they want to treat. And there's a finite number of such recipes. But when they can't figure out one that fits or works, they, there is no other recipes. And so labs like mine, uh, with the support of Ian's Friends Foundation and other support, are able to make a new recipe. And so it's very important for us 
to make new recipes for children that don't have therapy right now uh, and there are no existing solutions. If you travel around the country and go to some of the biggest research hospitals in, in, in the country, even the world, and you say, docs, where are we? Because we did this with Ian. And every time you say, where are we in research? And they say, at the time, not very far along. And you ask the question, is that because there's a lack of brain power? And the answer was never yes. It was always, the answer is no. What we do have a lack of is funds. And it's the lack of funds that's inhibiting our ability to put these great research ideas into motion. The traditional way of doing this is Barun and I would talk, we would write a proposal to the National Science Foundation or the, one of the federal agencies, and it would be two years before we actually heard whether it would be funded or not. And unfortunately, these kids don't have the luxury of time. They can't wait until a philanthropist decides that, hey, you know what, maybe a couple of years we'll fund this or we'll fund that. In a couple of years, children will be gone. So that's why the research dollars are so important and so vital that they come in and come in quickly. Being able to see the tumors, distinguish them uh, visually, uh, is very important to the surgeon to know that we've gotten the entire tumor out and we can go to a family after the first operation and tell them we've removed your child's entire brain tumor. On the other hand, if you remove too much tissue, some of that tissue being normal, uh, then you obviously can cause uh, harm to the child. And so between myself and uh, Dr. Belmkanda, uh, we have started a uh, project uh, that was meant to uh, turn tumors blue. It allows us to see these tumors uh, while in the operating room um, visually so that we can tell and distinguish what is normal brain tissue versus what is actually tumor tissue. Uh, there are some children and some patients uh, who have uh, tumors that are inoperable. Everything that makes you function, your ability to move your arms and legs, your ability to breathe, your ability to sense and feel things with your hands and feet, all go through the brain stem. And if you have a tumor in this location, a lot of times we are unable to do an operation there for fear that we'd actually make you worse rather than better by taking out a tumor. Because of this issue, we, we came up with a novel idea. Is there a way we can move a tumor and guide its growth to a safer region where Barun could just take it out? Or maybe we could design some kind of a sink where like Pied Piper will bring the tumor out and kill it in a location that is safe. And I'm happy to say that just this month, we have some very compelling data that we can indeed, for the first time ever, show that a tumor can be moved out of the brain. It can, it can be moved in a direction that we specify and engineer a path for it to move. That the moved tumor that we, that we are able to move to a different location can be killed at this new location by a special material we've engineered. It's a gel that sits on top of the brain instead of being inside the brain. And so we've been able to show all three things and we hope to write our manuscript for scientific peer review so that the best scientists in the world can look at this and see that it, it really is a, is a good way to do this. Innovation and, and, and radical ideas to help children were seeded by support that is, from, that is philanthropic, people like you uh, helping Ian's Friends Foundation and, and the foundation helping us, then being able to leverage into more dollars to help the cause that we all believe in is to try to make new recipes for children as I indicated earlier. When you go home and you hug your child, think to yourself, what happens if I was in that position? Well, I know when I hug you tonight, are you going to be there tomorrow? If I take you to the doctor just for a checkup, are you going to get those words? Uh, we think we found something. I was guilty of being too busy being busy. And until you're in the situation where you, you know, I'm now dealing with, for a lifetime, I, I'm dealing with childhood cancer. I will always, every single day, wake up and know that this could come back. Sometimes it feels like cancer is winning because um, we, we see so many of our little friends that just didn't um, make it and uh, we, uh, uh, we've got to catch up. It's been my goal essentially to try to cure brain tumors so that no one has to see me ever again. That time will come at some point, uh, but that time is not now. Uh, every dollar that you give provides hope to the children that we take care of and the children that you've seen before you today. Uh, every dollar counts and uh, we hope that with your de generous donations that we will make that money work, work for these children 
to try to help them and cure their cancer.